Hey everyone, and welcome to RPG Horror Stories with D&D Doge. In today's video, we have a tale about a first-time Dungeon Master dealing with that guy in his first game. A story about a Halloween one-shot that goes off the rails due to a Leroy Jenkins player, and more. But before we get into that, here's a kitty in an attempt to get you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There we go, now I think we are ready for some D&D horror stories. First Time Dungeon Master Forced to Kick Out Problem Player By Reddit user, I Eat Dice This is my first time posting here. This isn't quite as bad, but it was my first time dungeon mastering, and my first time kicking a player from my table. The cast is DM, me, and Sorcerer, the Problem Player. A few years ago, I was dungeon mastering a game for the first time over Discord. I was excited, nervous, but mostly terrified. I was running a homebrew game, and the start of the campaign was basically an apocalypse. The party was separated and enjoying their normal day, until tornadoes, firestorms, and lightning, etc. began destroying everything. The players took turns describing their normal days, and role-playing through the event. Some moved quicker than others, but I tried to give everyone equal time to shine, about 5-10 to ten minutes. Sorcerer's turn comes, and he describes, He's sleeping peacefully beneath a tree, with his fire cat resting softly on his chest, and... I cut him off with, Wait, what fire cat? I don't remember anything about that. Sorcerer, Well, you said we could pick an uncommon item to start with, and I found this one, where I get an enhanced familiar online, so I took it. Me. Dude, that's totally not okay to just grab a homebrew item without telling me. Send me the item. I have a quick read, all the while he's droning on and on about how he really thought it would be fine since it was uncommon, and as the dungeon master, it was my fault for not looking at his sheet, etc. The item seems fine, and I've spent too much time already, so I try to get him through the scene as quickly as possible. And then he says, I hop on my broom of flying and fly off the island. Me. How do you also have a broom of flying? Sorcerer. Starting gold. Me. What gold? I didn't give you any gold. Sorcerer. The book says I get gold when I first make a character. Look. He then dives into character creation in the player's handbook and again eats up time arguing that he gets gold and equipment. The other players are getting antsy, as I've now spent twice as long on him, so I say whatever, he flies away, and then a tempest knocks him down and he's sucked into a portal. I move on to the fighter, who begins describing his scene before a sorcerer cuts him off with, Above you, you see my character and his cat perched on his shoulder, flying several hundred feet above you on his broom. He looks down and begins to shout, me. No, no you don't. You got sucked into a portal. Don't interrupt. He mumbles something, but backs off and lets Fighter finish. It's now the Bard's turn, who has just finished a show. He's approached by fans, and Sorcerer chimes in with, Among the crowd, you spot a handsome figure in nice robes. He's cut off again by me. Knock it off. You had your turn. It's their turn now. You aren't here. You aren't anywhere. I'll tell you when it's your turn again. He mumbles again, something like, Fine, I'll just stay silent forever. Blah. And we move on, progressing now pretty quickly, and almost back on track for my original plan. It's now Warlock's turn, and he flees to his wife and three kids to try to keep them safe. He casts Liaman's tiny hut with his family inside, and has a nice emotional beat especially when I began to describe a tendril of energy poking through it, and Warlock begins brilliantly role-playing a scared father in that moment. It was a godlike being that was behind it all. But then, Sorcerer jumps in again. Um, actually, Liaman's tiny hut prevents any magic from going through it, so that shouldn't happen. It happens anyway. Sorcerer. No, the spell says on its description that... Me. 
I know what the spell says. I don't care. It happens. End of story. No buts. I am over your interrupting. Stop it or I'll mute you. Sorcerer mumbles about how it must not be magic, I guess. Blah, blah. And once again, we march forward. Some super quick context. In my game, we're a handful of champions who were basically leaders and heroes. Each of the party members were closely affiliated with one of these champions. I reiterate that they were close with and loyal to these champions. After everyone had their turn and was through the portal, the champions appeared to basically say, We lost, but we chose you all to be our chosen and fight on behalf of the country. Work together and beat him and then hands them each an artifact that, together, are the keys to victory. First thing Sorcerer does once he's released into the new world, while I'm describing it, is say, I take my artifact and fly away. I don't know these guys, and I don't trust them. This devolved into an argument that ate up, again, way too much game time, and I was forced to drag him into private chat to give him one last chance, as I'm now on the verge of just tossing him. I tell him that I've given warning after warning to quit interrupting me and quit eating up my game time, and that he needs to quit and apologize to the others now or he's getting booted. And he begins to whine, like literally whine like a child in the call. I just ban him from the server mid-sentence and went back to my mediocre game. TLDR Player interrupts frequently and hogs game time, literally whines when given a final warning. Well, you gotta give props to a first-time dungeon master for putting his foot down and dealing with a problem player. Sorcerer definitely seemed like a spotlight hog, and that combined with the fact that he gave himself homebrew without asking, and a flying broom, not to mention all of the arguing with the dungeon master were all telltale signs that he was a that guy. Besides, saying that he got the broom with his starting gold is ridiculous as I'm sure a magic item like that would cost way more than what the player's handbook recommends for a starting gold. Then there was the constant interrupting other character scenes and OP's descriptions, so I say good on the DM for nipping that problem in the bud right away. And by the looks of it, OP had another story to share, so let's get into that one. Player abuses party equipment, forces NPC into a life debt. By Reddit user, I eat dice. Hey guys, my post from yesterday went well, so here's another story. This time, I'm a normal player character. This happened about three years ago now, so some of the finer details are lost and I paraphrase a lot, but I still remember most of it, and bunches of it are still in our Discord. It's a lengthy one, so buckle up. The characters, Cleric main character, and dwarf, problem player. So a bunch of the players and I play online using Discord and Fantasy Grounds, and one of these games had been going on for a few months when Dwarf joined us, and for a bit, he was just a normal dude. He took his turns well in combat, was fine to roleplay with, though he had a touch of Gary Stu vibes, hating whenever he looked bad and had a habit of being kinda short with the other party members. But we played with him for a few weeks with little to no issue. In one of these sessions, Claire came into possession of some spell scroll that we were told could be sold for around 500 GP. Now, that's a decent amount of gold for low-level parties, but I remember the spell being a pretty good one, so we debated on what to do with it. Eventually, Dwarf chimed in and said, I could make use of the scroll. I'll hold on to it until we need to use it. So we let him keep it, and once we got back to town a few sessions later, he started talking with a trader. DM, I have what you seek, but it's not easy to find. I could give it to you for 150 GP, and that's a discount. Dwarf, I don't have your gold, so how about this? I like the gamble. He then rolls a d4 seemingly for no reason, and then says, I have this valuable scroll here to trade, valued at about 500 GP, and that's at a discount. The trader accepted, and the party was understandably upset, with Cleric saying, Dude, 
We gave you the scroll because you said you would use it, and you decided to trade it for an item worth way less? We could have sold it, gotten you your vial, and bought some potions for the party. What the hell, man? He just brushed it aside and basically said, Well, you did give it to me, and that means I decide how to use it. This seems minor, but to us, this was the final straw. As in regards to sessions I skipped, between him first getting the scroll and finally trading it are where the real problem was. We were dispatched to investigate some old cave by the beach that Saurgan were coming out of and holding kidnapped locals at. We made our way through the dungeon when a trap of some sort went off and began flooding the whole cavern with water. Thankfully, my druid had brought a scroll of water breathing with them in case something like this happened. I cast it, selecting all the party mates who needed it, and the captives, and we escaped. Success. Sighs of relief and celebratory hollers were had when Dwarf begins approaching one of the captains, a woman bard. Dwarf. I'm Dwarf, and I'm the great hero who risked life and limb to rescue you. For this you owe me a life debt, and will accompany me on my quest to save the world, until death claims us both as my loyal and thankful servant. DM Um, sure. Thank you so much for rescuing me. I'd be happy to repay you. If you give me my loot, I can serenade you and your companions. Dwarf No, I'll hold on to your loot. Now come with me. We'll talk more about this debt you owe me. Him and the DM go to a private chat, and immediately the call is in full protest. What kind of hero rescues people just to force them into servitude as repayment? Also, how are you going to make the bard go without her instrument? She was an actual bard too, with spellcasting and everything, and was meant to help us. Everyone had a sour taste in their mouths. They joined the call again, and not wanting to cause problems, we all just kind of accept it as whatever and try to move on. Dwarf goes on for future sessions to describe how the bard would make him breakfast in the morning, wash his clothes and armor, and even massage his back for him. Whenever a party member would say anything in protest, he would snarl back something like, She decided to enter this life debt of her own accord, so now she is holding up her end. If you don't like it, then you should have gotten her first. She was made to sleep in the same tent as him too, but that was mostly glossed over thankfully. Now we're back to trading the scroll. The party had had enough of them. No out-of-character talk or in-character roleplay was doing anything, so we took to mechanics. Cleric direct messages me, asking if my character would like to help to deal with the player. We weren't going to kill his character, we just weren't going to heal him. See, Dwarf had a tendency to rush into combat and would say stuff like, it's fine. If I go down, then Cleric will just pick me up. It's Cleric's job. Though, the Cleric was chaotic evil, and was planning on blackmailing him with no healing unless he got his stuff together. The whole party was in on it, including the Bard NPC. Wait until a combat, goad him into a bad spot, and then let him go down until he agreed to act right. It's worth noting that PvP is openly allowed in all of our games so we could have just killed him. The session after that, it was time. He rushed into combat, went down like usual, and told Cleric to pick him up like always. She did, but with an ability that essentially did a lot of healing, but prevented HP gain a bit afterwards. He was fuming. Dwarf, why would you use that on me? Now if I go down, I won't be able to get back up. You should have just let the bard heal me. What are you, stupid? Cleric. Sorry, I'm all out of spell slots, and you still have bard's loot, remember? He huffed, and the rest of us continued as normal. Cleric's turn comes, and she cast a spell. Dwarf. You said you were out of spell slots. DM, she's cheating. Cleric. I'm not cheating, and I'm not out of spell slots. I simply refuse to acknowledge a liar, thief, and slaver as a party mate. You're on your own. You aren't one of us anymore. Dwarf That's BS. You don't get to decide that just because I traded the scroll and you didn't like it. The rest of the party 
She didn't. We did. Let the part go, leave the group, or continue to struggle alone. It's your choice. He continued to object, but eventually he went down and started rolling death saves. His character eventually died. We all still felt bad, as the intention was mostly to scare him, but what happened happened. The dungeon master described that the bard was ecstatic and thankful to be free of him, before stabbing herself in the heart. Most surprisingly though, he didn't even seem to care. He said goodnight like normal and left. The next day, he messaged our dungeon master with an entire essay, blaming us for everything that went down. He said that we were bad role players, and that we had no reason to go against his character, and just disliked him as a player, and that we didn't have any idea how to roleplay with a party member that actually makes interesting characters. Oh, you remember that arbitrary d4 he rolled before trading the scroll? Well, apparently, he rolled the d4 to determine what he was going to offer as a trade, which might have helped if two of the other items weren't from our party sheet basically shared items of the whole party. It was at this point that Dungeon Master told us that he was having the bard interact in private ways with him, and also informed us that he made her sign a magical contract in which she had to serve him to no end and would be forced to end her own life if he was ever to die. He then left the Discord, and we never saw him again. Yeah, while trading that scroll for something worth far less without consulting the rest of the party is kind of an a-hole thing to do, and I can see how that was the final straw with that player, after all the times they would run wildly into dangerous situations and demand heals from the cleric. Plus, those interactions between Dwarf and the Bard could rub some people the wrong way. Normally, this is where I would say to talk about this stuff out of game, but as OP mentioned, they had already tried that. So, while this wasn't the best way to deal with intra-party conflict, you can't deny that it was effective of getting rid of the problem player. Let's move on. The Tragic Tale of the Halloween One-Shot Plus Bonus Story By Reddit user 1031Berserker I know that the folks I play with use Reddit, so if you all see it, hey guys. Honestly, this is really just a perfect storm of a bunch of minor things all happening on the same night. Individually, none of these are really worth an RPG horror story, but when combined. Also, I'm a veteran dungeon master, so this is more of a frustrated rant than a request for advice. I know what I did wrong. I figure maybe some folks on the internet might find amusement out of the situation. So anyways, I decided to run a spooky Halloween one-shot for my group. The premise was simple enough. Everyone makes a level 5 character. We do a brief dungeon crawl through the catacombs beneath a creepy town church, tangle with a lichling, really just a souped-up flame skull, and then they have to scour the town for clues on how to permanently kill the lichling after it keeps coming back. Our players assemble in an abandoned tavern outside of town where they meet the old cleric hiring them for the job. This is where we run into the first problem. A quick note, I'm not a fan of the Dungeons & Dragons alignment system, so I typically let people run with whatever. I do have some people in the group that legitimately cannot figure out how to roleplay a character without the alignment chart, which is the only reason I include it. However, I have a hard rule that everyone in the party must be cooperative and loyal to each other, Regardless of alignment, I do not tolerate backbiting in any variety. So two players, playing ogres, it was a one-shot so I allowed homebrew, immediately begin talking privately about how they can't wait to eat everyone else. This is an established group, and these two players know my rules. They had assured me the previous day that they were not going to do this, and yet here we are, with them talking about eating the party. I put the kibosh on that immediately, and they changed their tunes to be more in line with my expectations. Then we get to the next problem. The party's paladin, after accepting the quest, just beelines to get the thing done. He walks past every NPC on the way there, and he literally says, 
there's no time for this, as he's walking past them. So this leads to them skipping 75% of the narrative I had written out, and by extension, skipping all the leads they'd need to defeat the Lichling. For fear of getting left behind, everyone just follows after him. Any attempt to roleplay gets met with, there's no time for this. In practice, I'm fine with this. Am I a little myth that the story I spent two weeks writing got skipped? Well, yes. But them's the shakes sometimes. Sometimes a dungeon master has to stick and move. But then, they decide to skip the dungeon crawl. See, the Lichling is in the town's church catacombs, obviously with other undead down there with him. The party, being led by the paladin, decide to go confront the evil merchant man that brought the Lichling into town, instead of actually going to fight the undead. We need to treat the cause, not the symptom, he says. Alright, not what I had planned, but we can salvage this. They go to confront the merchant man, who reveals himself to be a mind flare, summons the Lichling to aid him, and a tough combat encounter ensues. One of the ogre players even dies. I had the Lichling bring him back as an ogre zombie, and he played against the party, and he had a blast. Eventually, the Lichling is defeated. They managed to find the Lichling's phylactery, though it was more through making lots of checks than actually engaging with the story, and they used it to defeat him for good. We have damn near two hours of our usual four-hour time slot left, and, to quote one member of the party, We really did just speedrun that, didn't we? Yes, you did, is all I can say. So, I decided to run a mini-session continuing our regular campaign. We did have two hours left, after all. My players, of which only one is relevant, a wizard white necromancer from Kobold Press, find themselves in a town with a haunted crypt at its center. They find out the local inn was burned down by an assumed necromancer that then fled into the crypt. Other adventurers have tried to pursue this necromancer inside, but they never came back out. So, the wizard decides to march straight into the crypts, like a lemming bent on throwing themselves off a cliff. She doesn't stop for anything. Other players? She ignores them. The heavily armed dwarf mercenaries that are making their own attempt on the crypt? She teleports past them. The party's rogue is the only one to sneak past the dwarves. The rest stop to negotiate and say hi. They recognize these dwarves as allies from a previous adventure. Yet another detail that the wizard ignores. The wizard, trailed by the rogue, makes it into the crypt, and the gates to the crypt shut behind them with invisible force. The party's ranger uses a siege arrow to knock the gates open, but it doesn't work. Something invisible is holding the gate shut. The dwarves volunteer to use a barrel of gunpowder to blow open the gates, but it will require the wizard and rogue to move further into the crypt to avoid being caught in any kind of blast. The rogue stealths and advances into the crypt, though the wizard makes no attempt to stealth, advances into the crypt, and gets ambushed by a shadow. The shadow lands its attack, reducing the wizard's strength to dangerously low but the rogue is able to kill it. The gates get blown open, and the rest of the party drag the wizard back out. And yes, they had to drag her, because it was not hard, thanks to her reduced strength score. The rogue chooses to be the rear guard, as they're withdrawing. The poltergeist in the crypt uses its telekinesis on the rogue, and he fails the strength save, dragging him almost all the way into the crypt. A tense moment passes as the party catches up to him, and then they promptly GTFO. The poltergeist laughs at them mockingly as they leave. Unsurprisingly, the party sits the wizard down to tell her how bad of an idea what she did just was. Though she doubles down, There's a necromancer down there. I can learn from them, is her response. When told that she could have got the rogue killed, the wizard's reply is, Well, I didn't ask you to come save me and then she states the dreaded words. This is what my character would do. And then she explains that this is her character flaw. In truth, yes, her character flaw is, I value knowledge more than my own life. However, 
The point of character flaws is to have the character overcome them. Instead, she uses this flaw to just double and triple down on the bad decision. She physically cannot admit that she's done wrong. An actual 30-minute discussion when this happens. I couldn't take any more of it. I should have caught it sooner, but I had a naive hope that Wizard would come around. At the 31-minute mark, I say that we're done for the evening, pack my stuff up, and my girlfriend and I get in the car and go home. As I'm backing out of the driveway, I opine that the one-shot and the sessions were both a mess, and my girlfriend simply says, yeah, my barbarian didn't even get to do anything during the one-shot. Disclaimer, this was honestly just a really bad night for everyone. I love my group, and the other 95% of the time, they're awesome to play with. This is just the 5% of the time that the mojo is just off. Honestly, even I was off, as I'd spent the week before doing job interviews. Sometimes, it just happens. On the whole, people did have fun. It was just the train wreck kind of fun, not the dungeon crawl against the undead kind of fun. Well, all except for the argument part. Anyways, rant over. Hope at least someone enjoys reading it. Well, yeah, it certainly sounds like they did speedrun that one shot. Though, even though OP says that he knows what he did wrong, I still feel the need to say that one shots do need a bit of railroading from the Dungeon Master, in order to make sure that things stay on track and do not take up too much time. Though, I suppose in this case, last long enough, when that one player just up and ignored everything to go to the person who summoned the Lichling, OP could have done something to impede that. Then, with the two hours they had left, another player does basically the same thing in their main campaign, and almost gets themselves and the party's rogue killed. It's good to hear that this is not the norm for OP's group, and just one time where everything just kinda seemed to go belly up. But that is all I have for you today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and may your games remain horror story free. Until next time.